TVs have come a long way in the past few years. Even from the first consumer OLED TVs, that technology alone has gotten so much better and brighter. And now, in 2025, we have the latest advancements in OLED displays. But is it worth upgrading just yet? Hey, I'm Marco from Ratings.com. Today, we're going to compare the new 2025 LG G5 with the older 2024 G4 model. These are the flagship models in LG's lineups, and simply put, they perform like it. But that doesn't mean they perform alike. In fact, they're pretty different. Today, we're going to take you through those differences and focus on a few main aspects, like the new panel technology the G5 has, colors, reflections, and HDR10 performance. So, considering this, is the G5 a major upgrade over the G4? And which TV is worth getting? The first thing we're gonna do is break down their panel technologies, because that's where most of their differences come from. While the G4 uses the MLA technology that we've seen on some high-end TVs and some monitors in recent years, the G5 is completely different. It still uses a W OLED panel, but it uses new primary RGB tandem technology. This is meant to improve color purity with a wider range of more vivid colors compared to past MLA panels. More on that later. It also comes with a different subpixel layout. It's BWRG instead of RWBG. Wait, what? Let me repeat. It starts with the blue subpixel, followed by white, red, and green compared to the G4. That starts with a red, then goes white, blue, and green. In theory, that shouldn't make a big difference, but we did notice some dithering on both the G5 and G4, which you might see if you sit very close to the screen. Just keep in mind that this is hard to see with most content, especially if you sit at a normal viewing distance. The G5 has this new panel technology with all of its sizes except the 97-inch model. Like the 97-inch variant of the G4, it doesn't have an MLA layer either. So, if you're in the market for such a big TV, there won't be much of a difference between the G5 and the G4. So how does this new technology affect the performance? First off, it gets much brighter, especially in SDR. It's so incredibly bright that you'll likely only need to crank it to its max when you're in a very bright and sunny room. The brightness with most HDR content is more similar between the two, but the G5 gets brighter with highlights of any size. And the G5 also has an improvement when it comes to PQ-EOTF tracking. This means it does a better job at displaying HDR content at the brightness that the creator intended. Sure, it displays some midtones a bit too bright, but that's a problem with the G4 too. Sticking with the topic of HDR, another advantage of the G5's new panel is the color volume. Colors on the G5 are almost twice as bright than those on the G4, but they're still not at the same level as a QD OLED. Regardless, your favorite HDR content will look vivid and punchy. And you won't have to worry too much about calibrating either TV to get accurate colors in HDR. That said, they both have some white balance and color accuracy issues before any sort of calibration. Calibrating it fixes this, but neither are still perfect. Okay, since we're talking about HDR, let's get to the elephant in the room. And that's the known HDR10 issues with the G5. It has contouring around dark objects in dark scenes, so it looks different from what the creator intended. It adds banding, and frankly, it makes content look kinda bad. This doesn't happen in Dolby Vision, so it's really an issue with HDR10 only. The G4 doesn't have this, but we'll update the G5 review on our website and as a pinned comment here if it's fixed with a firmware update. And if you're going to watch content in SDR, instead, there are a few more things we want to talk about. First off, the G5 has better color volume. No surprise here considering we just talked about that in HDR. It displays more colors in wider color spaces than the G4, like DCI-P3 and BT-2020. But unlike in HDR, both TVs are so accurate before calibration in SDR. Sure, the G5 has a few more white balance issues, but it's hard to tell. Of course, there are benefits to calibrating them if you're a color purist and want the best accuracy though. Like with any TV, the picture quality is best in a dark room, but they're both good choices if you want something to use in a well-lit room or during the day. Neither have too many distracting reflections and light doesn't spread out across the screens. But the G5 is actually better at keeping its fantastic picture quality in a bright room. This is because the black levels don't rise as much as on the G4, and it maintains color saturation too. Combined with the high brightness, this TV looks great in any room at any time of day. 
there are a few more differences we want to talk about. The G5 comes with the second generation of the Alpha 11 AI processor that the G4 has. So they're pretty similar in that regards. But the G5 is better at upscaling lower resolution content, like from cable boxes or DVDs. That said, the G4 has the advantage when it comes to gradients because it has less banding in greens and bright grays. So they each have some pros and cons. Besides that, the G5 also comes with LG's new Magic Remote. It's sad to see such an iconic look go, but honestly, it's the same thing in a new casing. You can still use it as a pointer, it just doesn't have a numpad or even an input button. And whether you're going to stream content from the TV or connect a Blu-ray player, both models also support audio pass-through through a soundbar or receiver. They both support all Dolby digital formats, but the G4 also supports DTS formats. The G5 doesn't, which is disappointing if you use physical media. And the last thing we'll talk about is gaming. We'll start by saying they're both fantastic gaming TVs with sharp motion at any refresh rate. They each support HDMI 2.1 bandwidth on all of their ports and can make full use of a PS5 or Xbox. The main difference is the fact that the G5 has a higher 165Hz refresh rate compared to 144Hz on the G4. This provides a smoother look when gaming, but doesn't exactly provide a smoother feel. This is because the input lag on the G5 is weirdly higher at 165Hz. So the G4 is better if you play games that need fast reactions and want the lowest delay possible at its max refresh rate. But other than that, the input lag is the same at 60 and 120 hertz, and gaming is pretty similar between the two TVs. So, with all that out of the way, which TV is better? It's clear that the G5 really benefits from the new primary RGB tandem panel, so we might be seeing a trailblazer in front of our eyes. Who knows, maybe in a few years this will become the new standard technology on OLEDs and we might even be able to talk about it with monitors on our computer channel. Subscribe. The higher brightness and more vivid colors on the G5 are really class leading for a W OLED panel. It really sets itself apart and competes with QD OLEDs, even beating other high-end options like the Samsung S95F in terms of brightness. Sure, its colors still aren't as vivid as on a QD OLED, but it has other advantages, like the fact that it keeps its blacks levels low in bright rooms. All this to say that yes, the G5 is better than the G4. It's a real big jump and one of the biggest jumps we've seen year over year in terms of TV panels. But it's not perfect, and you might not even want to get the G5 over the G4 right now. The HDR10 issues are a major drawback for a high-end and frankly expensive TV. You might want to wait until that possibly gets fixed with a firmware update before buying it. But cost is another consideration. Because the G4 is already a year old, its price has dropped a lot, and you can find it for less than the G5 while it's still available. So basically, if you care more about cost than having the brightest colors, the G4 might be the right one for you, while you can still get it of course. But if you want the best performance money can buy, go for the G5. That's all for a comparison between the LG G5 and G4. What do you think? Will you get either of them? Will you get both of them? Let us know in the comments. And if you want more details, check out our written reviews. The links are in the description below. Until next time, I'm Marco from Ratings.com, where we help you find the best products for your needs. This is meant to improve color purity with a wider range of more... That, that's part of the script? It's not on the script? You sure? I can read it right there. It's like Evan Almighty. It's like... <laughs> Sorry.